Hello and welcome back to Vintage Gaming Memories. I appreciate your interest, whether it's your first time here or a return visit. Please be sure to subscribe to help support and grow this channel with me. The video content here continues to expand and I only have you to thank for making it possible. In this video, I'm going to share with you my oldest handheld game currently in my possession. Yes, it is. This is called the Electro Tic Tac Toe. Made by Waco. This was made over 50 years ago. 1972 to be exact. I purchased this from eBay. About. Uh, maybe about a year ago. For only $30. So it came with the box as you see here. And of course the game itself. And in the box. It also came with the operating instructions. The condition is what really sold me since at this age of a toy, it normally has the signs of physical battle scars and inoperable parts. But luckily this one looks extremely well kept. So let's take a closer examination of both the game and the box. First, we'll start with the box here. Yeah, I mean, it's seen better days. But it is intact. Two D-sized batteries, not included. Already it's going to be a heavy weighted toy, you can assume. Patent pending, Waco, product with Japan. There's your 1972. And again, a picture of the product. It's, you know, presentation, not really a big marketing for... For, in my perspective, I guess, I wouldn't be looking at this and saying I have to have it if it was on the shelves back in 1972. But hearing it's tic-tac-toe, it makes you wonder, wow, really? What other ways can you play tic-tac-toe? So anyhow, that's the box. And then here are the instructions. You know, it's all there. Little stains. And don't know what that is, but again, basic instructions. How to insert the two D-sized batteries. And then... How to play. Well, not really how to play, but how to keep score. And that's it. The game itself. It's kind of, yeah, wouldn't say it's heavy, but it seems kind of durable. Plastic. Um, what I noticed from it. Great condition. Pictures online, I believe, were pretty good as well, which, again, is why I bought it. I've seen others that didn't quite look like this. Um, again, I did clean it up, so it probably didn't look like this when I got it. And here is the battery compartment. Absolutely clean. No corrosion on the terminals. So here's a little background of the company Waco. As I mentioned, it's a Japanese toys manufacturer. Many of their toys, if you'll find online, were tin toys that were sold in the 1960s, but they did make some battery-operated handhelds in the 1970s, like this poker game. And as for this particular handheld, believe it or not, it's been touted as being the first commercially available handheld game. Now let's see here. It is a game. Check. It can be played and held in your hands. Check. It is electronic by means of battery check but does coming out in 1972 really make it the first what do you all think you'll find many articles and chats online reaffirming that claim but i'm skeptical i'll have to keep searching for a solid source of confirmation but for now we'll just say possibly with a little bit of an asterisk next to it that this was maybe one of the very first electronic handheld games it's a very simple physically constructed game by looking at it also, the game itself has a simple concept that we all probably learned early in grammar school. Tic-tac-toe. You know how it goes, right? Two-player game where one player is the X's and the other is the O's. Each takes turns to claim a space on a 3x3 three three grid here, which is the play field. The first person to place three of their marks in either a diagonal or a vertical or horizontal direction, they'll claim a win on their score and 
depending upon how many wins you need to win overall, that's pretty much the game itself. However, there is also the strategy part of it. Yes, you can also tie or draw, as they would call it, without a winner. So that is the simple rules of the game itself. But it gets even simpler when you open and look inside this game. <laughs> you won't find any chips or circuits on a PCB, or printed circuit board. The electronic contribution from the game itself is supplying you with lighting up nine lamps that are directly under each of the nine spaces right here. So some may argue, is that really electronic? But you do have to consider that the batteries send electrical charge to the bulbs to light them up. So it is electrical in that sense. Comment below what your thoughts on that logic, because, you know, it's debatable whether that really is considered electronic. So let's go ahead and open this up and get some room here. And see what lies within. So we'll look at it here. One, one last time, you notice something, perhaps, there's not an on and off switch anywhere. And you'll probably wonder, where are the screws? I don't see any open holes here for screws. Do you take off the rubber or plastic footings? Mm. Let's look inside the battery compartment. Nope, screws there. So you would lead to believe that it's a snap-on cover based on that little notch. And the top comes off and then you can get right to it. So let's take a look. And of course, you gotta be careful because if you don't, you can actually get pieces to fall out. Okay, we'll put this over here so you can see. How's that? So those are this is the slider. It just sits on top here and nothing to do but move up and down to indicate your scoring on the game. And let's look at the cover itself. When I mention here, this is the play field. And what do you know? Underneath, when you move these tiles. What it does, it actually moves this little cylinder that now it's red and then that's green. And the light will reflect underneath and actually change it or display it on the other side. So that's how that all works. And if you put it right in the middle, you won't see anything. It's kind of hard to see maybe on the camera. But as you can see, they kind of get mounted here on the side rails of the three of the four. So that is how that side looks. And then here, when those things snap into place, they have these contacts, which obviously the battery is sending power to. And then they will illuminate the light that's within those cylinders. This little lever here, when you engage it and release it lifts these little plastic pieces up and it then it resets the cylinder to the middle which doesn't have a red or green light illuminating on the other side of that tile so it's the reset basically instead of you actually sliding the tiles which we'll get more into that process in a second here but that's pretty much it i mean it's very simple again the contacts that you see there tie in to the contacts right here. And that's how you get the power. Because obviously, if you look at this tile here, there's a little copper rivet, I guess you can call it, right there. And then on the other side, there's another one. When you have it touching like that, you're going to send power in and you'll get the colored light to display and if you don't have them touching having it like that which won't make contact at all to this which would then not have any light coming through and again this side would be the other color very simple right so you want to call this a electronic game 
I still think it is because it does use the battery as a source of power to illuminate the lights, so I think it does qualify. But let's get this back together and let's play this game. Okay. There you go. So like I said, no screws, very easy. Snapping, opening it and closing it. Obviously, keep doing that. You may break one of those plastic hinges and then it won't close properly. So to play the game, it's really manually driven by you, the player. And as you can see by the writing, it's meant to be played in a head-to-head -head type of position because you have the score and clear showing on that view and then turn it around. You can also see it. So you would have a player playing right across from you. You would be on the other side, so that way it's head-to-head. -head. And first, you turn this on. Wait, not really. As I mentioned before, there isn't a power on and off switch anywhere. So let's put batteries in, right? You need some power source to come in. And a 2D size batteries, it's what it needs. Let's weigh this thing down some more. All right. Well, I got the batteries in. And next would be deciding who's going to be green and who's going to be red. And let's just say I'm going to be the green player. And if I'm going to be representing green, you need to make sure that the scoring slider is reflecting green. That is here. That's closest to you. So obviously if it's turned the other way around, I'd have red towards me. And that would mean I'm the red player. So that's the first thing you have to make certain. And then you have to make sure that the scoring slider is in the middle. Because if you move it. You can see the number changes here. One, two, three, four, and then that expert, five. And same the other way. So let's put it in the middle so it's actually the beginning starting point. And then you got to clear the tiles. And I already did that, but if you pull it towards clear and release, the tile should be cleared. So when you take your turn to select a space to mark, you simply lightly slide the plastic tile, any one of these, down until you hear it click in place. And that should change it to your color, which would be green for me. So let's just say I'm going to select this one here. Hopefully you can see this. And there it is, green. So that's why it's important to be having this facing on the right side. Being that you and your opponent would be on opposite sides, your opponent sliding down which would be that way, is really sliding up from your point of view. You know, looking at this way to be pushing it up. But that's why, you know, your point of view is really key. Your opponent would be sliding down, and so will you if you're head-to-head. -head. It can cause confusion, though, if you want to do this as a handheld, and you're just holding it in your hand and just passing it back and forth, because for green, holding it this way, you slide it down. But then if you're going to be playing it the same direction with another person, they have to slide it up. For red. So let's just say I'm not going to be playing head to head and I want to be the red player now. I'll say I'll select the center one. I'm sliding it up and there's red. So that's pretty much how it goes. I mean, yeah, there is no brain to this. You just take your turns and then obviously I'm going to go down here. Well, the red guy's going to block it. Oh, wait, I'm going to go here for green and then. Well, red's going to block it here, and then I'll go green here. And then red will say, well, you know what? I'm just going to go here. We're going to call it a draw. And that's what that is. I mean, they all illuminate just fine. And yeah, you can see it flashing just a little bit because remember, those rollers have to hit the contact that tie into the battery, which gives it the power. So obviously now it's a draw. We would move the slider. So let's just say I did win this one with... The greens going, we'll say, diagonally right like that. What you would do then is slide your slider score up one, and then there you go. And then you would reset the play field, which is very simple with this little lever. As you watch this, it just lifts those plastics that I just showed you upward, and then that turns the rollers into a position that's neither red or green to illuminate, and there's no light coming through, and that's like... Like that so it's five overall wins over your opponent in order to get 
to victory if that's what you choose to do so. It is a nice talking piece to have and not expensive to own. It just might be hard to find one in a condition that you might want. Overall, it's an interesting concept to put the game of tic-tac-toe in this structure because really, what are you gaining over doing it on paper? I mean, yeah, the presentation is nice with the red and green lights, you know, but pretty much that's uh, about it. You know, you have two D-sized batteries to lug around. And it's really not compact to put in your pocket for travel. This is, it's not extremely large, but it's not a pocket game, right? It's a novelty of sorts, but I do appreciate having it in my collection, so no complaints here. I hope you found the video on one of the earliest electronic tic-tac-toe games interesting. We thank you all for watching, and until next time, keep your gaming passion from the past alive by living it today. Take care, everyone.